effective length factor for inelastic buckling of columns with non-idealized boundary conditions. In the previous lecture, we learned how to determine the effective length factor, k, for a column in a frame structure. First, we determine the stiffness ratios at the ends of the column. These ratios specify the relative stiffness of the column with respect to the stiffness of the beam at each end. When we assume the beams and columns behave elastically, E can be treated as a constant, leading to the following simplified equations for GA and GB. We then use the alignment chart given in the AISC manual to determine K. Knowing K, we can calculate the flexural buckling strength for the column using these two equations. In these equations, F sub E represents Euler's buckling equation. These equations indicate that the column could buckle when the axial stress is large enough to place the member in the inelastic region of the stress strain diagram. In such cases, the slope of the elastic curve is no longer constant. We refer to the slope of the curve in the inelastic region as tangent modulus, written as E sub t. E sub t differs from E in a significant way. Since E is constant, we can eliminate it from the stiffness ratio equations. However, since the magnitude of the tangent modulus depends on the amount of axial stress in the column, we cannot treat E sub T as a constant. Therefore, we cannot simplify the stiffness ratio equations as was shown before. When the column behaves inelastically, the equation for determining the stiffness ratios becomes. Since E sub t is not equal to E, we cannot eliminate the two parameters from the equation. The best we can do is to rewrite the equation in this form. If we refer to this stiffness ratio as G elastic, we can express G inelastic in this manner. Since E sub t is less than E, we refer to the ratio E sub t over E as the stiffness reduction factor. This ratio can be determined in terms of buckling strength using Euler's buckling equation. For elastic buckling, the strength of the column can be expressed as If we use E sub t instead of E in Euler's equation, we get the strength of the column for inelastic buckling. By algebraically manipulating these two equations, we can arrive at this expression for the stiffness reduction factor. Here are the graphical representations of F elastic and F inelastic as a function of effective slenderness ratio, KL over R. Note that in the inelastic region, the denominator of this ratio, is larger than its numerator. Therefore, the stiffness reduction factor is always less than 1. A convenient way to approximate the stiffness reduction factor is to use the design buckling strength equations given in the AISC manual. That is, we can replace these theoretical curves with the design curves generated from the AISC equations. So, the stiffness reduction factor can be written as To determine the effective length factor, K, for the column in the inelastic range, we start with the assumption that the column buckles elastically. We calculate G elastic for the top and bottom ends of the column using this equation. Using the elastic stiffness ratios, we can determine K using the proper alignment chart given in the AISC manual. Using K, we calculate F elastic and F inelastic using the AISC equations. We then determine the stiffness reduction factor.
When we multiply G elastic by the stiffness reduction factor, we get G inelastic. Using G inelastic, we can determine a new K value using the alignment chart. We can iterate along this loop until the difference between two consecutive F inelastic values becomes very small. We can take either value as the final nominal design strength of the column for inelastic buckling. We will demonstrate this process using an example shortly. But before we get there, let's spend a few minutes talking about an alternative approach to calculating the stiffness reduction factor. We start by considering the idealized Euler buckling equation. The equation can be graphed this way. For comparison purposes, here is the elastic buckling curve given by the AISC equation. We can see that AISC recommends more conservative strength values than values obtained from the theoretical equation. For inelastic buckling, the strength equation can be written as However, this equation is of little computational value for us, since E sub t is an unknown variable, not a constant, that depends on F inelastic itself. Instead, we can use an alternative equation recommended by the Structural Stability Research Council. This equation, developed in the mid-1900s, was obtained based on average critical stress for the standard wide flange sections. Here is a graphical representation of this equation. Similar to the elastic buckling equation, the inelastic buckling equation provided by AISC, represented using this curve, provides more conservative values than this equation. But the advantage of these equations is that we can use them to determine a direct value for the stiffness reduction factor. Recall that the stiffness reduction factor is the ratio of E sub T to E, which can be expressed as the ratio of F inelastic to F elastic. If we let mu represent the stiffness reduction factor, we can write Substituting F inelastic over mu for F elastic in this equation, we get Solving this equation for mu, we get Let's multiply the numerator and denominator of these ratios by A sub G. F inelastic times A sub G is the nominal inelastic buckling strength of the column, which must be greater than P sub U, the factored compressive load applied to the column. So, if we assume that the column strength is exactly equal to the factored load, then, the expression for the stiffness reduction factor can be written as This equation enables us to estimate the stiffness reduction factor for the column, given the load applied to the column and the grade of steel in use. For example, if the column has W10 by 54 for its cross-section, and the yield stress of steel is 36 ksi, since the cross-sectional area of the member is 15.8 square inches, we get. So, if the column is subjected to a factored compressive load of 400 kips, the stiffness reduction factor for the member becomes. Note that this formulation does not require an iterative solution for determining the stiffness reduction factor. However, since here we are assuming the column is as strong as the applied force, and not stronger, we are underestimating the actual design strength of the column. This conservative approximation is in fact an acceptable design practice. AISC offers this equation as a solution for determining the stiffness reduction factor. Details are provided in Chapter C, Section C2, Subsection 3 of the AISC Manual. Given that the AISC equations for compressive strength against buckling are in fact conservative approximations of the theoretical buckling equations, we shall use the AISC equations for determining the effective length factor, and use this technique as a secondary method for solving problems.
As mentioned a few minutes ago, using the AISC equations requires us to adopt an iterative process for determining the stiffness reduction factor. We now demonstrate this process using an example. Consider a steel skeleton structure consisting of five frames in the short direction. Suppose we wish to determine the buckling strength of a specific column in the plane of an interior frame. The target column is shown in the color orange. Put differently, we wish to determine how much compressive force it takes to make the column buckle out of this XX plane. Like this. The column has the standard W14 by 99 cross section. The length of the member is 10 feet. The beams restraining the column at the top and bottom have the W12 by 45 cross section. The column below has the same cross section as the target column. Here is a 2D plane view of the frame. We can get the needed section properties of the beams and columns from the AISC manual. We start by determining the stiffness ratios for the ends of the column, assuming elastic behavior. The equation for GA is substituting the lengths and moments of inertia for the beams and columns connected to joint A, we get. For GB, we have or. Knowing GA and GB, now we can determine the effective length factor, K, using the AISC alignment chart. Since the frame is susceptible to side sway, we need to use the alignment chart for unbraced frames. Here is the chart. Using GA of 3.19 and GB of 5.85, the alignment chart gives a value of 2.1 for K. Let's check and see if the effective length is short enough to put the column in the inelastic region when buckling takes place. If K times L, over R, does not exceed this quantity, we have inelastic buckling. In this example problem, we are using A36 steel. So, F sub Y is 36 KSI. Yes, this condition is met. 40 is less than 133. So, the column moves into the inelastic region before it starts to buckle. To determine the stiffness reduction factor, we need to calculate the column's elastic and inelastic buckling strengths using the AISC equations. Both equations are defined using F sub E, Euler's buckling equation. F sub E equals. So, the elastic buckling strength is. And the inelastic buckling strength equals. As I mentioned a few minutes ago, the stiffness reduction factor can be estimated as inelastic F critical, divided by elastic F critical. This ratio gives us a reduction factor of 0.22. Now we can determine inelastic stiffness ratios by multiplying the stiffness reduction factor by the elastic stiffness ratios. So, GA inelastic equals 0.7, and GB inelastic is 1.29. Next, using the alignment chart, we can determine a new value for K. The chart gives us 1.30 for K. Note the decrease in K value from 2.1 to 1.3. Using this updated K value, we can calculate the elastic and inelastic F critical values using the AISC equations. Here is the value for F sub E that we calculated previously using a K of 2.1. So, if we replace 2.1 with 1.3, we get a new value for the Euler's buckling stress. Using this new value, 
we can determine the elastic buckling strength based on the AISC equation. And, the AISC equation for inelastic buckling gives us this value. A revised stiffness reduction factor can be determined using these updated stress values. This revised value is 0.09. Using 0.09 we can update GA and GB values. Then we use the alignment chart to get a new value for K. This value is 1.13. Using 1.13 for K, we can calculate F sub E and the elastic and inelastic F critical values. Moving on to the next iteration, we can determine a new value for the stiffness reduction factor, which then can be used to calculate new values for GA and GB. In turn, these values yield a new K value from the alignment chart the new K value equals 1.1. Using 1.1 for K, we can determine a new value for F sub E, which can be used to update the elastic and inelastic F critical values. The pair of values yield a stiffness reduction factor of 0.06. Note that this is the same value we got in the previous iteration. So, if we go through another iteration, we end up with this value for buckling strength. Put differently, the iterative process has converged. The final effective length factor for the column is 1.1, and the final inelastic F critical is 35.14 KSI. Now we can determine the design buckling strength of the column using this equation, which yields 920 kips. As long as the factored compressive force in the member does not exceed 920 kips, the column is expected to remain unbuckled about the xx plane. When P sub U exceeds 920 kips, we should anticipate the buckling of the column. It is useful to keep in mind that the buckled column does not behave elastically, rather it exhibits inelastic behavior. We will continue our discussion on column buckling in the next lecture. Here are a few exercise problems.